Welcome back, this is the Clay Golem. This is Foundry VTT version 12. We're in my test world and we're looking at an add-on today. We are looking at Smart Target. So there was a mod called, uh, I think it was called Easy Target, um, which isn't available uh, anymore, not for version 12. Um, so we're looking at Smart Target instead, which in theory does pretty much the same thing. Now I never used the previous version, um, so I can't compare them both directly. But uh, do you want to take a guess who's made this lovely little utility? Yeah, it's another Ripper one and it is a freebie, which is great. So you can install this without Patreon membership or anything like that. So all I've got installed is Smart's Target with LibWrapper that it requires to run. Easy peasy. So normal default behavior as I'm sure you're aware in Foundry is I hover over and I can press the T button, uh, the T key to target them. If I hold down shift and press T, I can target multiple and press T again. It's gonna untarget all of those. So that's, uh, that's a nice little way of doing that. Um, perfectly acceptable but we can do better, can't we? Let's look at some of the settings we can configure for Smart Target. Now, as always, Ripper's ones are really easy to use, but they have some really nice customization as well. So currently I'm using the Target Default mode. That's what we just looked at. Um, standard Behavior. Um, it's going to do template targeting for us. Uh, get rid of that for the moment. Um, in fact, actually, I'm going to leave that on because I want to show you what that... I'll come back to it. <laughs> um, so you can see there's a number of different things that we can set here just to do with the size. I'm going to put that up for the sake of the video. It's probably extreme. Um, yeah, I'm just putting a few things, you know, a bit, bit, bit bigger so that you can see them. So when they look silly, you know that that's what it is. And we have a default target indicator, but you can see there's some other options. Okay, so the best way to see this is actually to look at it from a player's point of view. So let's bring Sorryman over. Now I've got the um, I've got the options open for Sorryman here. Um, as you can see, players get fewer options, but they don't need as many, so that's fine. So targeting mode default. What happens if we change that to alt click? It's pretty obvious. If Sorryman now wants to target something, you can move around. Uh, I can still use T, the T key, but if I hold down alt, I can now just select that way. And yes, I can select friendlies as well. I can hold down shift and alt if I want to there we go, <laughs> Alt and Shift, uh, if I want to be able to target more than one. So that's nice and easy, isn't it? And again, I can just Alt click on one of them to turn that off. So that's really quite straightforward. Um, Alt and click as opposed to hover and to T, not an awful lot in it. Let's carry on with some of these settings. Now players doesn't work for the DM for very good reasons. Uh, always target player only. So if I just left click, because I don't own those zombies as a player, I don't own those zombies, it's going to automatically assume I want to target it by clicking on it. And of course I can click on it again. So I don't need to press the keyboard at all, just my mouse, click, there we go, that's what I want. And again, I can shift and do that um, to select multiple. Now, I can't select the bore, oops, didn't mean to double click it and I can't select over here so if I hold down alt I can select even those neutral creatures so normally it's stopping me accidentally targeting my companion uh, and this boar which is neutral um, but it will allow me to target anything hostile so that's cool isn't it that's um, I mean it's not a huge labor saver but it's easier they just click now notice there is also this release behavior. So we've got it on standard, but we can also have it on sticky. Now it's quite small writing again. Uh, this setting determines how, uh, how refresh target behaves when clicking multiple tokens. Sticky mode means each target um, without an un uh, will be targeted without tar untargeting anything. Uh, that made sense, didn't it? 
So if I click this zombie, I can target him. If I click the next one, it's just going to keep adding them. So it doesn't go, oh, I want to change who my targeting. No, it's sticky. That sticky is, tar is staying on. So I can select my three people that I'm targeting with this spell, this attack, whatever it might be. So that's nice. Again, I'm not touching the keyboard. This is just a left click mouse button on those. Really straightforward. So you just need to work out what's going to work for you. Um, these indicators. Let's have a look at some of these. So what's crosshair one? There we go. That's crosshair one. So we get that instead of just highlighting the box. You might decide that that's what you want. Let's have a look at crosshair two. Okay. So may not be suitable for every game, of course. Uh, bullseye. I think we know what a bullseye looks like. Yeah, there we go. Um, bullseye two. And the final one. Uh, it says better target. Oh, okay. There you go. So, I mean, certainly if you're playing something a bit more sci-fi, firearms and stuff, you would probably agree that these um, would work better. But it's total preference. And the players can change that independently, which is really good. So something I want to do, let's just leave that uh, crosshair one on, leave it on sticky for the moment. And I'm going to uh, target that one and that one. Now what I want to do is go back to the GM screen because what I want to see is how do I know who's been targeted? See the tiny purple dot there? So it lets me know that the player has targeted that one. But that's not very clear, is it? Hmm. Um, yeah, that doesn't matter. That doesn't matter for me. Uh, not looking at templates at the moment. Portrait token. Oh, okay. So this is the image you use on the indicators, right? So we can select this one. We can put that where we like at the top left. And this is where I try to make them a bit bigger uh, to make them a bit obvious. Uh, do, 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 target indicator. I can set that for the GM as well. Use the player color for target indicator. Yeah, let's just do that. Um, so Sorryman should be able to. Uh, it's not giving me what I was expecting, to be honest. It's giving me just a little dot. It wasn't doing that before. Why? Why? Uh, is it because... I don't know. Oh, how strange. Because it was giving me... It was telling me, basically, who was targeting those creatures by giving me a little image of the person who was targeting them. Mm. Uh, and it will be because I've changed one of these. That's all it is. Uh, keep target indicators inside the token. Use player color. I can turn that off again. Is it because I, you know, made these too ridiculously big? Shouldn't be. They go all the way up. Use the token image. But it's giving me that little dot, and that corresponds to the player's colour. Um, I'm not quite sure. Whoops, a daisy. Didn't want to do that. I, I was looking at it just a moment ago. What have I done? Show indicator portraits instead of colours. Stupid boy. <laughs> yeah, I'm here to entertain, all right? <laughs> so actually, you can see there's this tiny little portrait in the corner. Now I'm going to make those bigger. All right, so target image scale. Let's put that. Let's put that right up. It's not. Uh, oh, I see that scaling the image within there rather than target icon size. Let's put that right up. Well, there we go. Right, brilliant. So let's put the image scale back to one. Boom. There we go. So obviously it's massively too big, but I can see that, ah, Sorrymon is the person who has targeted this monster. So this is going to be just fiddling with these and deciding what's probably about the right size for you. That might be a bit more sensible. So on the other screen, as Sorrymon changes who he's targeting, uh, it gives me that little indicator.
So rather than using that colored dot, as the GM, I can see whom is targeting which creature, um, regardless of you know what I, as the GM, have got targeted. That makes it really nice and clear that uh, when the players say, oh yeah, I'm going for the middle zombie, and you go, there's four, there isn't a middle, there's two in the middle, they can actually flag precisely, or rather you can see precisely which one they've targeted, and if you've got multiple players all targeting, you can obviously see which players are targeting which. Um, now, interesting, what happens if... I'm just... Yeah, I'm, I'm not sure I can do that. I'm just wondering if I've got multiple, uh, it's going to give me the same. It's going to give me the same thing. Bear with me one second. Because I'm an idiot. No. Um, do it from the token. Uh, that's fine. Sorry, bear with me. Ownership, that's what I'm after. Player one is the owner. So player one owns... Uh, Rombar as well. So Rombar should be able to also target a creature. Now that's interesting. It's uh, so when Soriman, I've got Soriman selected on the other screen down here, and when he targets this bottom zombie, it gives him that little icon. If I switch to Rombar and he targets the top one it's actually changing target and it's still showing Sorryman. Uh, but that's because Sorryman is the primary for that one player. I'm only logged in as one player, but of course that's not how you would expect it to be running in the game anyway. Uh, and that might be just something that I could fix. So it's saying Sorryman the player is doing that. Now, is that one of the settings though? Because I said use the token image um, and I'm wondering if the token portrait might change that so Sorryman is going to target the bottom one Rombar is going to target the second one down no so it's only given me Sorryman's picture there uh, which makes sense because you're not expecting people to have multiple player characters um, but yeah that's it that's it in a nutshell that's what it does uh, I think we went through all of those didn't we it's just changing those bits and bobs so sorry it got a little bit muddly it's just uh, I went a bit off track because I suddenly wanted to experiment with it myself because I hadn't actually done that before starting the video uh, so basically yes you can target with alt click or players can target by just left clicking any non-owned token uh, and then you can hold shift in both of those instances to select multiples um, you can have the sticky thing on, so you don't need to hold shift. It will toggle targeted or not. The only thing we haven't done is placing a template. So let's see how that works. So we're obviously we're in Sorryman right now. And if I want to, let's make sure we haven't got any, or get off. Let's de-target them all. Now, Sorryman's going to do a square template that should cover them. Uh, that has not auto-targeted them. And I suspect that's because of the type of template rather than being a spell. Yeah, that's not automatically done it, has it? Is it a setting we've got on our side? No, it's not. Um... template targeting when pressing alt click on a measured template there we go right that's why <laughs> you try these things you go i know how it works and then it doesn't so let's do that again let's do that square template we're going to alt and hold down and oh again it doesn't look like it's targeted them what am I doing wrong? And it will be me. I know it will be me. Alt. Yeah. That's. Uh, 
Oh, right. Okay. I got it. So... <laughs> Would you believe I do actually look at this stuff before uh, before doing these videos, uh, and then I get carried away trying something else? Okay, so Sorryman, when he's selected, if he wants to put down a spell template, um, let's do a cone. You place the template as normal. Okay, let's just twenty-two and a half foot. What a bizarre range! Um, so that's where he's putting the template. Now, if I go back to him so I've got him selected and I press alt and click on the template it will target everything in that template does that make sense so go to templates I'm going to draw my template like this and then when I've got him selected if I want to just make sure everybody's in there targeted clicking on the template does nothing if I hold down alt and do it I'm now targeting that boar, uh, or this way I'm targeting those zombies. Uh, but this zombie in the middle, he's, I've just clicked him, he's getting missed completely. So, uh, sorry that was a little bit scrabbity, but a little bit all over the place. Uh, back to the DM screen, we can see that it has indeed identified for the GM who is being targeted there. Uh, I hope that was useful. Sorry, it was a little bit all over the place. Um, really nice little mod. Just Again, it's just a qu little quality of life thing that can just make your player's life a little bit easier. Of course, you will need to either force push settings to them or talk them through and say, hey, look, just change that setting. Uh, and it's one of the things I plan to do for my session zero just with, you know, in any game, session zero is apart from characters, apart from background. It's like, right, these are the settings that you have access to in Foundry, and these are the ones that I want you to have or I can recommend. So some I would say, no, I want that on, I want that on. You know, things like, and don't do it at the beginning of Session Zero, but things like go and customize your dice so nice, right? Don't do that at beginning of Session Zero because they will spend the entire session customizing dice and they won't make a character. <laughs> you know, you know I speak truth. Um, so perhaps kind of do that at the end and just go look whiz through before we start next week. Let's get you all set up, get all your settings sorted, uh, and then you can crash in on your first session, session one, and actually get on with it. So I hope that's been useful. Um, again, yeah, another Ripper mod, another freebie. It's great. I hope you, uh, yeah, I hope you find that that is going to add to your games. Take care. I'll see you in the next one.